This is 77. 63, contact the New York Center, 128.3. 28, Hello, Captain. On approaches a flight sim and aviation enthusiast podcast featuring the week's top user submitted stories, in this case, two weeks user submitted stories and news from around the world on the Skylash.tv. Thank you very much, everyone, and welcome to another show. Good to see you again this week. Good to see you gentlemen again this week. Yes. I apologize for pulling the card uh, this this past week and skipping a show, but with the birthday holidays and all the craziness, uh, we ended up basically coming up to like a back to back between the release of one show and the recording of another, and it just made sense. But here we are. We've got some great topics to talk about. Some people said so. there was no news this week, so <laughs> there and was that's, news. I can see where you're going, but yeah, had a good week. Um, can't remember what I did last week because the weekend was in the way. <laughs> I had a little drive to Montreal, spent a couple of days with friends, and yeah, that was nice. A little cruising. A little cruising. You know what? The season finale of the Car Club is actually on, on October the 8th. Oh, yeah? Is that when everybody puts it under a cover and parks it and puts the snow no, tires the, on? No, the drive. Or uh, it's, oh. the it's the sixth, actually, the same day as Flight Sim uh, show. Flight Sim, yeah, Flight Sim show. But uh, yeah, usually like 50 cars driving around. We have a little little drive. That's pretty cool. This is the nice. season finale, though. Nice. Won't be there this year because you know Costford. Ah, I'm glad you're missing something too, <laughs> because I was about to cancel my trip to Costford because it's Fleet Week. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, San Francisco Fleet Week. Look it up. We're talking boats and planes at the Golden Gate. And it's an incredible, incredible week of aviation and nautical porn, basically. Um, but that is the, it's the same the same week as uh, as Cosford as well. So Let, we let's both vote are missing date something. Further. Let's, let's vote. vote. Push that date. All yeah. in favor of pushing Cosford back, say aye. Alright. Alright. <laughs> and just you guys just comment in the yeah, just comment See? below the video. We want an, we want a we want a, a petition. <laughs> I think so. I personally I think it should be a month earlier because October's Ooh. a very odd month in the UK because it could be raining, it could be sunny. It's it's that transition period between summer and winter, so you never know what the weather's gonna be like in October. Right. Mm. right. So what, how should I pack? Speaking of, of weather, so I, I just bought, I bought an amazing jacket today. Kevin, you're going to be a little bit jealous. You, I'm, I'm not going to show it off right now. I'm not going to do it. Maybe for the next show, I'll be all ready. And maybe for the next show, we all should be. But I bought an amazing jacket and I hope I can put it to use in the UK. How is the weather going to be? around then sparky because i don't remember never, anymore from last year you you can't predict it man you can't yeah. predict it. i mean last last year at cosford it was nice and sunny and fairly warm but the year before that yeah. it was chucking it down with rain and it was miserable and cold so you can't you can't call it <laughs> mm. it was I, I remember it'll be rainy rainy <laughs> <laughs> it's the noodles like, after all noodles like i'm not gonna be there it will rain lots so on short final, it will rain. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain in Vegas, but it's gonna be Cleary Cosford. Yeah, that'd be nice. Nah, it really won't be raining in October. <laughs> if anything, we'll probably get three days. Well, three I'm excited days. to go, man. I just uh, just before we started recording, folks, I had to actually change my booking. Uh, there is an event that we'll be attending at. Uh, Good, good, good word, good word. good word, good, good, good wood. wood. I always want to say good word or goodard, uh, but at good wood, um, where we will be getting some flight time <clears throat> in a Spitfire simulator. So we'll be meeting up there on Thursday, but my ticket was originally booked for Friday. So I just had to pay a little extra money to change that because that's just an opportunity not to miss. So. We'll be there if anybody out there is looking for something to do on Thursday. That's a great place to meet up. We can meet up there. More details will be in the meetup thread 
that I will link to down below in the show notes. Let's move on with the run up. Does anyone have anything they want to share for the week? Good, bad, ugly, great? I was reading about, what was it? Um, it was a new Google phone or something, the one that folds up. And I got to thinking, I find it pretty interesting that uh, we're getting to the point where having a desktop computer is going to go the way to the dyno sooner than later. Um, if you really look at phones now, and I don't think most people really have because people are so caught up on the bulk of people I've noticed um, reading threads about new cell phone tech and all, everyone's so caught up in a goddamn camera. It's like, oh my God, I can take these great pictures. Yeah, whatever. But I think you're, you're miss. I think a lot of people miss out on what they're really holding in your hand. You, it's getting to the point to where that's all we're going to need is that, you know, screw the camera bit, you know, where it's going, I think it's, we're getting closer to that point where the necessity of having laptops, desktops is slowly going away. A commercial I just saw uh, as well was some phone bragging about, look at the robot playing Fortnite on the phone. Uh, more and more games are coming to cell phones and all. So I feel uh, given it enough time, we're going to see these phones that are going to have increased memory storage and all, which I feel that can't be done right now. But it's just uh, it's the whole economics and greed by increasing, you know, what they can do every few years, even though I'm sure they could do it now by giving cell phones a lot of space. But I just found it really interesting looking at that. Now we have this foldable phone, which was pretty slick, but it's getting closer to that point where we're not going to lead uh, a lot of the stuff that we have. The final bit I had with that was uh, I've read a lot of cyberpunk books and all. So those cyberpunk fans out there, I think you might kind of agree um, if you played, you know, the games, uh, you played the pen and paper, read enough books. I think that if you think about it, you can start to see some parallels from the cyberpunk world to what we're slowly starting to see with just having a single unit in our hand and it's everything that's it so that was the big thing i was really thinking about last week uh when i read about that so yeah great conversation about that yeah that's that's some deep thought man um i i too saw those those commercials yeah chat down below let us know what your uh what your thoughts are on on the future of mobile technology right versus what we consider today desktop technology a lot of people don't even think they ever need to own even a laptop which is weird because mm. their phones do everything what you got mr kevin not much really i can't remember what i did last week so <laughs> i guess i'm done uh, maybe <laughs> like good. a little little status update on the helicopter i bought two stream decks they're they're uh they're used now as a uh as sort of a gauge cluster so you know when you use vr uh you got to reset the camera when you're looking forward uh since i got two computers connected to one another and yada yada uh i, I had I, I i have now two stream decks dedicated to that function and opening the doors and shutting down the sim and opening up the sim that's the final piece that i needed so it's up and running all good customers starting to flood in that's pretty good that's nice. that's all i got though <laughs> nice what you got sparky tron not much man still no uh no call on my my round the world trip that you know i need help on you know no no flight plans coming in no liveries saying i got you covered nothing so uh <laughs> i'm just what do i do yeah. man what do i do i'll fly your 747 with a blank livery Blank livery, Boring, bro. Now, isn't it? Boring. <laughs> white, just pure white livery. Well, I've got nothing this week either. Uh, I haven't really uh, scooped up anything new, uh, and I've not really been frustrated with anything. So I've got nothing to warn people on, really. Uh, I'm good for the week too. So this is good. This is it's a good thing. It's been just super chill, man. I've just been taking it super chill. Really, just flying for myself, and it's feeling. Feeling good. It's feeling nice. So. Lots right. of lots of lots of P fifty ones this week. 
It's... Lots of P51s. <laughs> yeah, a lot of flights in that bird. Let's get on with the show. But first, a special thanks for our contributors of the week. In the number one spot, out of nowhere, Flying Jock. Welcome, sir, and thank you for some great topics throughout the week. In second place, Mr. Lewis Bloom, followed by Ivana Fly, Mr. Gibbon, S. Simmons 1958, Tarpoon, SSH, Catterly One in the eighth spot, and then Alpha Fox Sierra, and last but definitely not least, Beach 8 NH. Thank you guys very much. Without your submissions, we've got nothing to talk about here on the show. So we really, really, really appreciate your input, whether they are topics or news or just kind of discussion points, even questions directed specifically at us. We love seeing those posted. So head over to the skylounge.tv and post up some content. And now before we go. It is the end of the month, so I'm very excited to announce this month's winner. Mr. Gibbon, once again, Gibbon returns for the winner of the month. Uh, he will be getting gold club status. So Mr. Gibbon, look out for that uh, message. I'll send you a PM with a, with a code to redeem. Thank you for everything that you do, Gibbon. We really appreciate you and on to the next month. Now into the top news. This one submitted by Mr. Gibbon. GSX level two, possible release date and additional expansions. GSX level two is an expansion pack coming to the popular GSX add-on by developer FS Dream Team. Announced back at FS Expo 2018, the new expansion pack will bring fully animated 3D passengers to our simulators. Furthermore, the expansion will turn every non-SODE jetway within the sim to be compatible with the popular in-sim engine. This means jetways will dock accurately to your aircraft, enable more information to be displayed on them, and the option to have dual jetways attached to your aircraft. This means every airport, regardless of how it was developed, will be compatible with GSX level two. Those words from our friends at FS Elite. That sounds interesting, guys. Every mm -hmm. airport, like customer or not. Make those default jetways um, animate, because as you know, at the moment, even when they lower down, the legs sink into the ground and, and whatever, because they're, they're not animated to collapse. So, you know, it just, they just sink down or whatever or up. And they, like, sometimes they even the legs are floating off the ground if it's well, a big aircraft. So I'd I like to see how they're going to work that. I don't think they're going to be animating the pre existing. They're going to be replacing the pre existing yeah, with their own. Yeah. So it's going to basically be they probably have found some way to read at what uh, coordinate in the 3D model the jetway attaches. And they have removed the jetway that is in that that model and then replaced it with their own attached to the same place so now you'll see their jetways which gotcha. are animated gotcha. so but it's interesting concept right like so even if that airport is not a sode airport it will be now that's pretty damn cool yeah that, I, i'm curious to see how they deal with airports with static jetways you know those kinds of developers who say it's not a jetway simulator yeah. um see how they deal with those because sometimes they can't remove the jetways alone without removing the entire terminal um th those sceneries though are very few and apart um i can't i can't recall maybe princess juliana was like that at some point i can't recall um i'm curious to see how they deal with that i know it's like infinite like little portion of the, the the scenery and it's a absolutely amazing to see that uh technology being uh expanded to all those airports really, well, here we have expensive. the passengers here looks great yeah it's uh well oh steady hmm. 
looks a bit drunk. <laughs> yeah, so uh, maybe some of you watching this video remember flights. Uh, no, Roller Coaster Tycoon World. Ah, the walking animation doesn't feel human to me. But what do you expect? I mean, yeah. let's be honest. It's... You know, this is a flight simulator. You know, with, yeah, it, it's, but still, they, just... they have bone animations. They've 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 got they've got the tools that they need to make it feel natural. I mean, the the avatar works like in a beautiful way. It walks more naturally than what I'm seeing there. You think uh, so? The arms are like robotic and i, hate I mean that. even orbex hasn't been able to crack that nugget bro like even orbex's statics walking around people flow even they're like robotic no i haven't seen it yet where it's not robotic there's no need for it i mean there's absolutely th i mean this just this is giving immersion it's given a little more for you to see when you're loading and deboarding your plane this is great mm -hmm. but to go and worry about having a fully simulated uh body meshes and all in flight sim what are we gonna what are we turning Ooh, it into look what the is, crew what is what's Hi, the Captain. end purpose dude you know? the crew and they came out of the right door yeah so you know you know it, you pause it there pause it there all right it's posture all right, back it up a few frames what would it take to just close that hand? It's not a lot to ask, right? I know, like, it's about immersion. It's about knowing things are done right, even if you don't pay attention to them particularly, all right? I sell visual effects. I sell condensation on the wings and the engines for people who mostly fly in the cockpit, right? But they know it's there, and it does it matter. I think he's been on a long flight because he looks like he squashed his uh, his melons. I don't walk there. like this. I don't walk like this. <laughs> yeah. See, but it's got to come down to if you, if you start speaking uh, and saying things like that, it's going to cause a problem because then everyone's going to be chiming in about, well, not this is not right. This is not right. This is not right. This is not right. It needs to have this and this and this. Thus, it is no longer a app an add-on utility for a flight simulator we get overly focused on the minutia that we're forgetting this is just for ambience this yeah. is not for yeah. absolute you know realism and all if you want all of that there are other platforms for this to me yeah, i dude. think it's a it's a waste of time and 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 resources and all to worry about the minutia i mean this because because this has never been done before i think this is fantastic for what it is and you know yeah we know that it, they're stiff but what, what do you want but what do you want yeah you know i, I love What's what you're saying important? noodle and and i and i feel it because it, i'll say it again it's what i love about this group right is the simple fact that we're going to come at it from different angles and and i know what noodle's thinking why the fuck do i want my video card or my cpu wasting any cycles on this bullshit. right this is going to, you know when this releases and all this again seeing all this this is nice for what it is it gives a more ambience to your flying this as it stands it's great but to go and barrel down into the minutia then i want to see <laughs> better faces i want to yeah. see randomized yeah. faces I want to see eyes blinking. You yeah, it's a deep tunnel. Yeah, sim. don't come to flight sim for this. It does not take more CPU cycle. I'm not talking about animations of eyes blinking. I'm talking about the shape of the hands. Just make one block takes less geometry than just leaving those spread. So they're gonna walk around with block <laughs> hands? No, Guaranteed. just like natural hands are like curved like this. You never walk like this, never. <laughs> Never. I guarantee. I guarantee. Uh, GSX level two still won't have a bloody uh, limo when your bizjet lands. Well, <laughs> well, well. You might be surprised. Yeah, it might they, be. Uh, I read somewhere. I read somewhere. I don't know if you're gonna get to this, but appropriate vehicles. They're planning, and uh, no, they're they're planning on other expansion packs for GA airplanes and military ops, which might bring limos. And I really hope they do. That'd be great. That sounds fantastic. Oh, yeah. 
I don't mind my CPU cycles going to something like this, but I, but I have to say, like I do see what Kevin's saying. Like, hit me with a, a few more details that are really gonna lock it in for me. But I also see what Noodle's saying, which is like, let's not get crazy. This one submitted by Lewis Bloom, one for Edson, sneaky. A2A AccuSim Bonanza Snippets. Give it to me already. Uh, A2A Scott has posted some little snippets over at the A2A forums of the upcoming AccuSim Bonanza. So here I am doing some development on the Bonanza, specifically adding the stall warning horn sound. And suddenly the plane starts banking right. I paused the sim thinking I mucked something up in the code, but then I realized that maybe this is an AccuSim failure. So I unpaused it after almost, after being almost 60 degree banked, full left rudder, stick back, watching airspeed, got it level, then took this screenshot. You can see the aileron is jammed, slight right aileron up which means I need a lot of left rudder to compensate. I'm now going to try and deal with this situation and live to tell about it. We'll post the results here <laughs> shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you sell a product to the noodles of the world. Am I right, noodle, that this is talking to you? This is systems, baby. This is systems. These are the things that a lot of people want to see when you're, when you're going to go and pay you know, about $50, $60 for an aircraft, and you're going to go and state realism, fidelity, use these buzzwords, you have to produce. Um, so yeah, this is, it's, these are things that I tend to look for. I'm sure, I'm not, the, I'm not the only one. I don't want to spend my CPU cycles on that. Of course you don't. Ah, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, balance is restored. <laughs> Uh, I'm alive to tell about it. Here's the story of the flight back and my thinking during the emergency landing. The nose is bobbing all over the place. And all I can think of is situations like this where you can see a high performance aircraft with a V-tail can be a handful and much more dangerous to deal with than a slower, more simple airplane. Only experienced pilots should ever operate a V-tail bonanza. Fortunately, there's an airport straight ahead, but I have plenty of gas and I'm not going to rush anything. I'm going to be, I'm going to first just get used to flying this airplane a bit with no aileron as I keep using the aileron instinctively. I need to get rid of this reaction before landing. Here's the airport over my left shoulder. I'm going to stretch it out and to the far right for a nice and slow and easy left bank, left turn back in. Don't want any steep right turns because I may not recover. Feeling pretty good at this point. Still having a heck of a time keeping the nose straight. And my left foot is cramping. My man is... He's working that rudder. Stomping Started on that thing. skating to the left, but still stable. I just want to get down on the ground safely. Ended up landing very hard on the grass. Then bounced onto the taxiway. Ouch. My back hurts from that one. Maintenance hangar after the landing. You can see the new avionics section as well. This experience felt like a real emergency. You have to love flight simulation for the power it brings into our homes. From A to A. Nice. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. Ah, give it to me, baby. Amen. The nice thing about this is, and this is where I wish uh, more, uh, I'll just categorize everything more gaming developers need to do by putting their best people out there doing things like this so not only are we letting you know that we're making products we're also testing products to a level that most people would not even think of that we actually test our products on so stuff like this uh i think it's just a, a, a really good thing and it just shows that not only do we care about making our products real, we're also sharing with you what we're going through through as well. You know, we are looking, 
you know, for these things that you might actually experience, uh, and which is possible to, uh, to happen depending on the airframe. So uh, again, kudos to the uh, whole entire uh, A218 for the amount of work and details that you do and putting up uh, posts like this to give people more uh, in-depth look on the build, experiences, develop the uh, process as well. When do you reckon this is going to drop, Edson? Do you reckon it's going to be pre-Cosford or post-Cosford? It's interesting. We're getting so close now. This would be the perfect Cosford drop. I don't know if A2A has time. Actually, I know they don't have time um, on, on stage, but it would be the perfect Cosford drop. And unfortunately, uh, Lewis won't be there this year, so I won't get to this to see my man lewis but uh i i think scott will um this would be a perfect drop for cosford i mean i i'm waiting and i'm sure i'm not alone the v-tail is an incredibly popular ga aircraft uh, my uh, father-in-law flies one i've gotten some time in one in his specifically it's a handful and it's a whole lot of fun to fly um the situation that he was in is a very scary one and i think that as more people start to experience that they're going to have a lot more respect for those v-tails they see zooming around above them because they're everywhere v-tails are everywhere man <laughs> but flying one is interesting so if anyone out there wants to ever do like one of those little trial flights go find somebody that has a v-tail bonanza to do it in because when they hand you over control for a little bit and they have you play with the rudder for the first time in your life, you'll feel something that is just very odd, which is rudder input doesn't necessarily just scoot your butt side to side. It tilts your aircraft too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, uh, and, and that's a, that's a trippy feeling, man. It really is. It really is. Um, I, it can't come soon enough, man. This is a beautiful plane and I want it now. Coronado announces new project, the Diamond DA-62. This one submitted by Flying Jock. Coronado has just announced their newest project and it's a beautiful little twin engined light aircraft, the Diamond DA-62. The DA-62 seats between five and seven people and is a relatively new aircraft having made its first flight in 2012 and being introduced into service in October 2015. Let's follow the link to our friends over at FS Elite. Here it is. Seven people in that little thing. It's a lot of people in this little thing, I'm man. Just, These are not I'm big just, planes. I'm just asking, do we need another diamond? Yeah. Do we need another one? They're fun. It's it's funny seeing this because I remember when I first picked up the 42 a couple years ago, um, I had wished they had done this one uh, uh, at the time because it, it is a lot better. It has better performance. But also, I, I, I also find this uh, really interesting that they're doing this now when Aerobasque has already released the DA-62 for X-Plane. So I find that little odd that they're announcing Ooh. this and yet... Aerobasque has already put out theirs uh, for X-Plane. And uh, you know the logical next step is that Carinado releases it for FSX P3D, and the logical next step is it's going to hit X-Plane next. So. And it won't do well in X-Plane because the Aerobasque one, it, it's just going to yeah, it's it's jump. GTA it's going to break its back. It's yeah. not as good. It won't be as good. So I do want to point uh, out something I see here with this uh, with this windscreen. The, the Diamond, for me, has always been an incredibly beautiful VFR aircraft with a lot of visibility out that front windscreen. This seems very different. Look at that. That's very yeah, squashed. Very, very yeah, lean. The thing is about the, about the 42 and stuff, it's got a huge glass cockpit. And mm -hmm. yeah, visibility is great. But this one doesn't look like it's going to be like that. My guess would be... Though, this is touring. It's been a while. They pro it's probably, since it's accommodating more people, uh, a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of width extension, so to accommodate the amount of people. So something had to give a little bit. Thus, you know, that windscreen. 
you know, that view, which at the same time is kind of an odd move as well. Looking at the 42 and the 62, just out the windshield, how they're vastly different. It looks like it was made for efficiency. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Like aerodynamics and stuff. My my guess all, as well to come back to the P, the P3D X plane thing. Uh, my guess is that most of their market is still on P3D, so it it was worth doing. Mm -hmm. And they can just I I don't know what Avionic is in there, but my assumption is that they'll copy paste what they've done with the the other uh, the other Diamond aircraft and just put it in there. So it's basically a remodel of the outside, the inside, and using the same gauge that they had, which is not a for Carinato, it's not a huge, huge deal mm -hmm. when designing an airplane. So they, they have a full fleet, so they can they can definitely brag about that. Mm -hmm. You got a full diamond fleet now, which is good. And there's a beautiful uh, freeware scenery as well for the diamond factory. So if anybody out there is wanting to kind of add a touch of immersion to their delivery of this aircraft, a pretty nice freeware aircraft uh air airport out there for the diamond there is a there's a diamond factory in london ontario like a few hours oh. from where i live and uh, a friend of mine fred if you're watching we're waiting for your scenery for x-plane so i'm pushing you to do it and that includes <laughs> the, I, I, that includes the diamond factory so you got to release it now it's out there there yeah, you go good. it's in the universe All perfect right. come on fred Gisborne. Giz let's let's <laughs> let's say let's say Gisborne, okay? It's Gisborne, <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Gisborne, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> NZGS Gisborne Airport coming soon to FSX and P3D. Hello everyone, we are taking you all back down under with the third airport by Finney Hansen, NZGS in New Zealand. If you're a fan of Finney's previous works, ENNO Nottingden, 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 and Hammerfest, we're going to, you're going to love this recreation of this regional airport. NZGS is situated on the outskirts of Gisborne on the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand and is one of the few airports in the world that has a railway line, the Palmerston North Gisborne line crossing the main runway. Additionally, oh. there are heliports located on the north of the airport on top of a hospital. Yay, right. that'll be fun. Right. So I like that train, though. this brought to you by our train, friends though. at Orbex. Um, let's have our initial peaks. Orbex quality, right? <laughs> yep. It's good yeah. quality as always. Uh, steel work. Oh look, we have a we have a worker on break here. Yeah, Jeez. smoke break. Yeah, that's a smoke and we have break. 3D, we have three D people inside the terminal. And I'm wondering if they Ooh. are people flow. If they're moving. Ooh. That would be interesting. That would be. I'm also wondering if the lighting will come out of those lampshades inside. Ah. Uh -huh. That yes. would be dope. Yes. <laughs> Look at that chubby truck. <laughs> truck. Oh right. my god. Yes. Look parking at that simulator. detail. That's parking lot simulator. Oh, Look at I a motorcycle. Look at a motorcycle parking. Yes. Dude, that's sick. Dude, I, would, I would totally drive around that. That's Noodles parking. Car. Beautiful. Wow, the baking of the lighting is beautifully made. He's, He's still, still on break, break man. <laughs> <laughs> so there's your answer. So you see the shadow on the ground as well? He has like a double shadow on the left of him. Where? That's from both lights. Uh, oh, yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's it's a very nice touch. I oh, really like it. Damn, that. from these. Yeah. Huh. He's, He's still a rank. <laughs> this guy. Dude, that guy is not doing anything. You sure he's not dead? Somebody go and poke him. So let's <laughs> let's look at this late this lady in the window, right? Let let's look at her for reference, okay? She's standing right in the window back there. Let's go back and see if we can find her here. She's still there. 
And then let's... She's... Oh, it's a he. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think it's safe to assume that they're not moving inside because... Oh, let's not go too far. <laughs> wow. Helicopters. Dude, look at the yeah. Ford Fusion. These these are yep. wrecking. We went we went from having these knockoff weirdo cars in Sims to starting yeah. to really see recognizable to the rims automobiles. Yeah. Do you remember the boxes we used to have? Yeah. <laughs> the box that looked like a car. Now we got cars. Yeah. Oh, dude, it crosses the actual runway. And dude, the real I have train. To say, though, I have to say, it's a pretty bad rendering of a train, though. <laughs> but what if it's that? What if it really is that basic? Shall we have a Maybe. peek? Maybe. Okay, so this is the actual train. Let's let's flip back. Okay, Sparky, you have a point. <laughs> but. <laughs> But those it's are work close. in progress. Those are work in progress. Those are work yeah, in progress. It's close, it's close yeah. but you know, hey, look, you know, you're not gonna be studying the train, are you? It's you're gonna be landing. I, I think we need to see the badge. This is mm -hmm. so so much a requirement. That badge has got to exist. And a right? bit more, you know, a bit of chrome on there. A bit of you know, a bit of bit of that. That, uh, not chrome work, but uh, uh, the, the gold banding and stuff, you know, it'd be nice. A few little details. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's missing this whole section up here of those, uh, whatever they are, some yeah, reservoirs or, yeah. yeah. So, work in progress. I'm going to say work in progress, and we we'll probably haven't touched heavy detail on the train yet. But yet. The funny thing, the... There is a train simulator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you want this train, you know. But then so again, good. you know, this is this is just a flight simulator. <laughs> I don't so know. So good. I don't know. Bro, look at that dash eight looking mean right there. Looking good, yeah. Get to the helipads. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin, <Breaking news. laughs> Bitcoin plummets, forty six percent. With a so teenager, good. whoa, with a mask, whoa. What happened what? there? What? <laughs> okay, she's working late tonight. Um. Find <laughs> 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 yes. all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, look at the lighting. It is yeah. contained inside those. That's very nice. Oh, wow. Look, and it's intense right over every area. Oh, that's it's nice. Glowing. <laughs> it's glowing. <laughs> All right, man. This is uh, very, yeah, nice. uh, oh. very obviously uh, it's your standard Orbex quality, and that's going to be a go. This one submitted by SSH. Tutorial by Dino Catanillo. Aircraft conversion from P3D to X-Plane. Greetings, fellow <laughs> simmers. This came up when I was going through my Google Now. Tracking my activities is paying off, I guess. Tutorial by Dino. I always said that X-Plane 11, with X-Plane 11, the migration will start from ESB, ESP based platforms to X-Plane 11. And if such conversion methods and if available tools of conversion show up, then we're in for some great fun. A2A or PMDG on X-Plane? Hmm. <laughs> Not sure it'll go that far since these add-ons have a lot of logic and systems behind them. But hey, we're getting close. Cheers, boys and gals, and let the conversation begin. Mr. Edson, we are waiting. <laughs> I love the giphy use, man. I love the giphy use. So this is actually a great conversation, Pete. Um, a really cool guy, developer, for documenting the process for other developers that may be 
uh, you know, considering the move of their their uh, products to X Plane. So he took it upon himself to kind of write this this manual, and it doesn't uh, supposedly it doesn't go all the way through, but he walks you to the water, right, to let you fish on your own. Um, but it's an interesting thought. He was able to convert his stuff over. Carnado obviously is now has their way of converting their stuff over and they're bringing over some of their older things too. Um, what if the time comes where it's just like this, right? Like they have tools now to convert sceneries. What if the day comes that we have something like a migration assistant for airplanes that unlocks some huge possibilities. Maybe for basic aircraft, I can't see this for anything more complex because the problem also comes down to you. Sure, you can convert it and all, but it doesn't necessarily mean in the X plane world that it's going to work right. You might have to end up turning right back around, go into the plane maker and adjusting all of the little uh, parameters, I'll say engine performance and all that. You could end up fire converting some uh, GA plane, let's say single prop, and it, it converts well, you fire up X plane start it up and the thing launches like a rocket you know so then the next problem is knowing how to work and use plane maker to adjust all of those performance uh factors so great idea but i think this would be left to those who absolutely are either plane developers or those who have spent a lot of time at plane maker. I would say just the average user. I, I don't know again, because if there's a problem with it, it means you have to go into plane maker and edit all the performance attributes. So correct yeah, me I if I'm wrong, but plane maker is the tool that my man rush uses that, right? That's where he to tweak yeah. dives in to tweak aircraft mm -hmm. physics. And so, I do know that Rush is working with Milvis and so to bring over Milvis products in specifically uh, the 310R uh, to bring that into X-Plane. So <clears throat> by putting those two things together, right, you have this guide that shows you specifically how to convert the model, right? This doesn't show you how to convert systems and whatever, but this converts the model. So now you have a model with no no systems, no physics, no anything. But then you add a lad like Mr. Rush with all that knowledge to that formula. Now you have a model and somebody that can make the plane fly right. That's a killer combination, huh? Yeah. yeah. But Mr. That, that, Rush, yeah. it's time to put your services out there from, from with what a I price. See, from what I see from that blog post, it's mostly taking a point of view of the customer trying to reverse engineer the model into x -Plane. It's not really meant for developers to convert their own plane to that simulator. Um, so most most airplane developers will, will prevent that in the EULA. So they're not supposed to do that. Um, I can recall the MD-11 from PMDG being installed in P3D V3 and how people got banned for it. But it, it um, but it wasn't his intention though, right? Like his intention is clear. I decided to write a small guide and memo to help other designers that may want to convert some of their models to X-Plane 11, mm -hmm. but were yeah, baffled but by the lack of communication on the plugin and how to use it. So he seems to have identified that the, some of the tools that you need or the Milvises and the Carnados and the everything else's of the world to convert. Some of those tools were just not well documented. So he's kind of like mm. filling in the gaps with knowledge and saying, here's what you do at this step. That's actually yeah. pretty cool. Like for a developer to step up and say, hey, let's let's get more on board to bring over their stuff. I have to kind of just bounce up what Kevin is saying. This is there, I don't think this there. If there's going to be discussion about it, it's going to be in other areas and more quietly, uh, because this is gray area. Because if you scroll down a little bit, important no support of any kind is provided. I'm sorry, but I will not have the time to provide support or replies on XP11. So, 
to me, this is how I read this. I have provided you a ways and means of doing something that could be potentially illegal. However, I am not going to tell you specifically on how to do it so that my potential ass is not looked at if you get in trouble. I've seen shit like this in the past in different games where people do things like this, but then kind of, well, I told you about it, but I didn't tell you to do it. So this is a CYA move by having that at the end. Like, mm. I like what the guy has done. I've used the products before. However, I have seen stuff like this before in the past. This is very gray area and it does borderline on all those agreements that we all do not read most of the time. <laughs> well said. Neighborhoods coming to explain 11.30. This one submitted by Flying Jock. Laminar Research has dropped some interesting photographs of something that isn't seen in current flight simulators. Neighborhoods. The X-Plane developer showed off two photos on their Facebook page showcasing what they titled Neighborhood Autogen. The photographs showed high resolution photos of a typical neighborhood setting complete with houses, a park, and mailboxes at the end of the driveway. All from street level perspective. While there's no firm release uh, date for the 11.30 update, the developer has teased some other features that will be included, such as particle effects, updated physics using research mode, upgraded prop wash and downwash effects, crew and passenger oxygen systems, anti-ice systems, and more. Fresh in version 11.30, neighborhood autogen. Let's have a peek very good renderings dang very good Still well you know what i think triangle trees though <laughs> look at the trees man <laughs> jerry's gonna go off on the trees you guys know what i think but it's yeah. it's good though um i've never seen a single park in p3d <laughs> so i can say it's a good way forward i'm very happy to see that so here's it what's interesting real, real. about the trees. <clears throat> if you remember the old, the original FSX trees, if you will, were a very similar shape to this. The, yeah, the, 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 in, the intersection, and then it had a canopy flat piece. And what Orbex did was highly optimize our trees by basically killing off that canopy piece and leaving just the two intersecting pieces and you know better texturing obviously but i i wonder if at some point x-plane will follow and just kill that kind of canopy piece that it has um or and get or, rid of this or is that an integral of part of the shadowing half yeah half the problem with the x-plane trees is they self-shadow and it, like, that ruins the shadow. It, it directly impacts the tree's shadow. And it looks so bad. So bad. Yeah. It does. But I, a lot of it has to do with texturing. And I feel like this... And that has been a problem since forever. It, it got better since they uh, modified the rendering, rendering engine to provide like PBR and stuff like that. It got better. But... When you look at those pictures, it all looks a bit fat, uh, fat, flat, even to me. Uh, it like uh, we're missing a bit of contrast, we're missing a bit of saturation. And ah, that's what I say. Soul, missing a little soul. soul. It doesn't have soul. Yeah, the shadows are super dark. Shadows are where they should be. I think it's everything else that's a bit too flat and too, yeah, not enough contrast. But autogen well, mailboxes is incredible. That's some well, amazing to, detail. Back to the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah think that's this the is point, right? Thing. Yeah, I, I think this is a nice thing. My question would be as this uh, the development goes is um, if they're going to be adding the neighborhoods and all, will how would this be, be based? Will it be just random? Will it be based on real life areas? Um, so I, I would love to see 
if it's based on real life areas that get plugged into a database then you could potentially see you know your own area um and be like yeah that park or whatever that is actually right there so i think this is a nice thing to add more to the realism uh and and all of your flight sim and then two that allows you to have better and more accurate visual cues um for vfr flights as well so when you're looking down and you're like hey i know there's a park at the corner of this and this and you can see it i think that'll be great yeah i think it's it's i believe it's a replacement for objects that were and region that were already in autogen that were already in the v25 or 26 that we're at right now mm -hmm. i think it, they're just like replacement for those but osm which on which this data is based osm has that data so you can see where parks are and and all those areas hospital and stuff like that so I, I assume they're they're positioned right already. It's just that now we have actually good objects to put on top of that data. Yeah, it, it's gonna be pretty pretty slick if it works out in a real state. Yeah. Nimbus Simulation Studios K O R D previews. More for some X plane. Look at that. Nimbus Simulation Studios have continued to preview their upcoming Chicago O'Hare International Airport for X-Plane 11 over on their Facebook page. Simply captioned, get your charts ready and get ready for O'Hare. X-Plane is growing. Blow it is. Strong. It's insane. Getting insane. a lot of airports fast. Yeah, a lot of add-ons fast. I love this logo, by the way. Nimbus, if you're watching, mm. I love this logo. Good branding. Oh, this is great. All the yeah, ground clutter. Very, very nice. Love it. And of course, uh, uh, Lemino have just updated Chicago as well. So the, yeah. the city looks really nice as well. They yeah. actually updated the um, the landmarks, like the yeah. city. Yeah, it's even yeah. got the bean in there. Yeah. Chrome oh really? In Chrome? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I, I, I'm looking at this screenshot and I have to ask you guys if you feel the same way I do. When I look at this type of a screenshot, my soul, and it's funny, I talk about that often, right? My soul cringes a little tiny bit. And it does so because I know what it would take in P3D to render this scene. And I, I can feel mentally what my frame rate would be in this scene and i hate a little bit knowing that this screenshot to me in x-plane looks easy like mm -hmm. does, does that make sense like i can see yeah. how in x-plane this is like nothing to render this scene but i can also see if this were p3d and i was rendering this in p3d man i know i wouldn't be touching 60 frames per second plus you know, like it's just heavy. It's heavy, and it, and it and it crushes my soul a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I do it all the time and explain uh, with world traffic. Um, once you know you generate the route to get things going, uh, the airport gets populated, things start moving. You can just sit and watch and traffic, man. It's great. I do. I do yeah. that a lot. It's so great. And, and then the nothing. lighting, you watch them coming in at sunset. The aircraft are just lined up and you're just smoothing about, man. It's like nothing yeah. in x -Plane. It really is. Uh, I have to also point out the colors in this particular screenshot are fantastic. Yeah, you were saying is, about soul. Yeah, this is x -Plane. This has soul right here. Yeah, there's a lot you can do now to tweak. Look at that. Uh, colors and... You know, there's, there's, I know there's a big post on the X-Plane forums about, you know, don't touch our, our color <laughs> don't touch our shaders. or anything. Don't touch our shaders because it's going to, next update is going to break everything. But there's so many tools now to allow you to tweak and, and change and just, you know, brighten the light and you can make it look really good. You can well, really on, make it look good. 
on that note, I know it's a bit off topic, but uh, you you touched on a good point. The the article that they posted about the uh, the not do not touch the shaders and stuff. If you don't want people to touch the shaders, give us freaking options to change the colors and the shading. Something built in or an API or whatever, because you know you bet you people will forever touch those shaders now because we started doing it with p3d and it's never going to end so you might as well put an api in place to do that how beautiful is that nice shot that's beautiful yeah yeah it's looking great it's man great. i mean it's chicago dude and you can't go wrong and these screenshots they sell the product yeah they sell and the when, when chicago when this beautiful the, the chicago scenery is done uh you know the, the sim is getting serious now <laughs> exactly. It's a good destination. Airport Geneva for X-Plane. This one submitted by Aerosoft via Ivana Fly. We are currently getting working on Geneva Airport as an all new development for X-Plane 11. I butchered that. We are currently working on Geneva Airport as an all new development for X-Plane 11. Since the scenery is made from scratch. It will take advantage of all X-Plane 11 features available. The X-Plane 11 version is done by Omar Masrur. There will also be a version of P3D V4. Ladies and gentlemen, can we just point out what just happened? Yeah. Aerosoft is making a scenery first for X-Plane. Mm -hmm. But we'll also be converted to p3d v4 it's like a yeah. background thought right <laughs> the thing is i i wow. I, have, I have this airport in 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 p3d i wow. don't know, I can't remember who makes it but uh it's such a great approach down the 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 river um geneva lake geneva i think it's called you know that 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 dog leg down the, the lake and clipping the mountains it's 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 such a beautiful airport to fly into Says the X Plane 11 version of the scenery features a custom terrain mesh that has been developed from an actual digital elevation uh, model. In the attached video, notice how the shadow of the aircraft warps during approach as it passes over varying terrain height. You can also see the cut between the custom and default meshes, which of course will be fixed in the release version. Interesting. Look at the shadow of the plane specifically oh. on the ground. Holy moly. Those See, houses, you don't bro. you don't notice you miss this stuff in in P3. But here we go. You're coming into the custom. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow, dude. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Oh. <laughs> Just right. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, look at it. Look at it on the ground, dude. It's like undulating, yeah. right? Because it's... Oh, the wing flex is just so good. Well, the wing flex and the actual shadow edges are, are molding over the actual terrain elevations down the side of the runway. Yeah. Minor oh, little... Right. Look at it. See it? It's like rolling because it's rolling the shadows rolling right it's rolling over terrain mm -hmm. bro that's bananas wow and, and you feel, be you an feel the airplane you, you feel the airplane also rocking left and right just like the real airplane would yeah on the rough rough surface <laughs> x-plane is just an incredible lighting engine man <laughs> it just is right Wow. Yep. Come on, roll over a, an airport easy. sign or something. I want to see this. Oh, <laughs> no, more, no signs yet. No signs yet. Dang. That feels right. It that does feels feel really right. right. Wow, that's... Oh, yeah. Bunkers. Gorgeous. One thing I will say is as, as a quick kind of a like a, uh, like a go team X-Plane fanboy kind of thing. If you pay attention to including the viewers and all, if you're on the fence and, you know, and you're just all about your P3D and, you know, 
that you can have both. Just really look at the motion and feel, you know, as it's taxing down and then taxis off. It's just so smooth, sublime. And honestly, I have never truly been able to capture that in prepared. No, that's right. I've not been able to do it agree. at all. So, you know, yeah. that's why I love this platform. Uh, one of many reasons, and that's definitely one because you can sit in that plane, you can look, you know, in a replay and just go, wow, you know, this is, it, it's believable, you know? So yeah, that's my little fanboy moment. So Edson, when is, when are you flying on next plane? Oh God, Soon. moving on, PM. moving on next. Time. Are you waiting for X and Viral? This is the only missing now. And it is the, that is pretty much the only thing missing is X and Viral. Soon, TM. Whoa! Oh, oh my God! I'm gonna give up asking him, Kevin, because I know it's never gonna happen. Is this legit? <laughs> oh, that's good. I love this. This is Whoa. nerd stuff right there. They got every little bit of detail. Even on the runway, you see there are some bumps. Yeah, look like at that. There, right, there. right there. Yeah. Right here. And right here. And right here. Dude. Whoa. <laughs> Good job. You see the roads and stuff. <laughs> I love this. This is cool. Yeah, that's bananas, man. So my question to um, was it who makes this? Airsoft. Aerosoft, mm -hmm. maybe Matthias is probably not watching, uh, but <laughs> like in terms of senior de scenery development for X Plane, if, if there are any developers out there, are you able to have a better mesh resolution than what you usually had with uh, P3D for for those developers who touched P3D or FSX at all? My assumption is that you get more resolution, so you can do that kind of stuff. Because I've never seen that applied to P3D at all. Like those, those resolution and those meshes, I believe not to be possible in, in P3D. So you guys let me know. I'm very curious about that. Good question. New merch, Flight Sim 2018 RAF Cosford limited edition design now available in our store, ladies and gentlemen. Showing off the TSL Roundel available t-shirt form sweatshirt zipped up hoodies uh baseball tees stickers and mugs scoop this up we've got the raf cosford uh text on it as well definitely check out the discord the announcements will have any discount codes that uh that we have currently available but yeah show the love And now under worth mentioning, this is a speed round, ladies and gentlemen, all the stuff that has come in that are updates or releases for things we've already looked at in detail. Here we go. Prepared 3D V4.4, possibly coming Q4 2018 with PBR. Possibly. Real Air range of aircraft updated for P3D V4. If you own the Real Air fleet is a v4 updater now however contrary to rumors they are not making a comeback will not be new aircraft there will not be a new company uh kgpi glacier park a link to license transfer into orbex store is available here x-plane sob 340a 1.1 update now released from x aviation Noodles giving the thumbs up on that bad boy. The AccuSim Spitfire from A2A gets an update. A2A releases the V4 AccuSim P51 Mustang military variant and the civilian variant. No high performance variant just yet, but coming soon. An X-Plane not to be left behind in the P-51 camp. Also this week, getting a P-51 by Skunkcraft. The Lancaster B MK-1 is released for V-4. 
That's by Just Flight uh, via Aeroplane Heaven. Navigraph charts. There's a short news update. Uh, sounds like they'll be pro providing commercial airline charts soon. Flight One Citation Mustang receives an update. The Mad Dog MD80 re receiving Service Pack One soon. Avro Vulcan B MK2 updated with interior shots from Just Flight. The Charity Scenery Project, the National Bowl, now available for V4. WF Scenery Studio releases. Not gonna try it. Zang. <laughs> not gonna try zang, it. Zang Zang Yanga. Zang Zen Yang Airport for P3D V4. Aerosoft provides an A32321 trailer. The Coronado S360 gets an update to version 1.1. Aerosoft Airbus Pro 1.1.0.1 Experimental is now available. And last but not least, Madagascar for P3D V4. Free scenery. And I have to say, it looks really good. Really good. Photo reel coverage, auto gen, the whole nine yards. Thanks to SSH for posting that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us. Gentlemen, thank you for sticking around. It's a late night tonight. And I know, Kevin, you just got off the drive. And Noodle, you're not feeling 110%. And Sparky, well, Sparky. It's just damn Sparky. early. It's damn early. Go get, <laughs> go get another <laughs> cup of coffee, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful night. We thank you all for joining us for another show. Until next time, Sky 5.